Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to take a look at the Esheen All-in-One F3 Brush Flight Controller. This one features a OSD and a built-in receiver. You can get it with FR Sky, Fly Sky, DSM2, and DSMX. This one is the FR Sky version. As you can see here, I've got it plugged in and ready to go. Well, not ready to go. I've got it plugged in. I've verified it works. So let's uh, take a closer look. Uh, the board does not come labeled really at all. So let's uh, try to nail down these pins and I'm going to try to use my little pointer here. So of course we've got ground and, and battery uh, back here and then we've got motors 1, motor 2, motor 4, and motor 3. So you just wire those to the closest locations of your motors. And the important part, so our first pin right here is video in. So that would come from your camera in here for your video. This is video out, so that would go to your transmitter. And then you've got 5 volt next to it, and then you've got ground next to it here. And then up here, we have uh, LED, and then we have 5 volt, and then we have ground, and then we have two beeper pads. So really a full-featured brush board. There you get an OSD, you've got a receiver built in, and you can add a beeper. The only thing you're missing, uh, the 2S option. Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? In this particular case, for demonstration purposes, I think I'm going to use this uh, MC01. This is a camera I've had around for a while, and I never really bothered to review it because, for my purposes, it's just too big and heavy. You know, it's 10 grams like it is. I think 10.4 grams like it is. Of course, you can cut some of this stuff off and lose some weight, but it's it's bigger in dimensions. But it works out great for this demonstration because it has built-in video in and video out. The other reason I don't recommend this camera is it doesn't have built-in filtering. So if you plug this into your board, you'll probably get some feedback from the motor spinning up and you'll either get lines on the screen or you'll get just flat static. You'll get no picture. Uh, it does come with a regulator of some sort, but again, more weight. So for micro quads, it doesn't work out great. If you're doing something fixed wing, it might be perfect. But we're going to use it for demonstration purposes. And uh, this is another product you can use with the board. This is the VTX-03. So this is the VTX-03. And this would also work out great. You pair it with, you know, a 3 or $4 camera. So as we talked about, you go to your video, which is our yellow line, our video in here. Or actually, it would be backwards. Excuse me. From our camera, we take the yellow line, which is our video signal in here, and we connect our VTX to the video out, and then we can get our 5 volt from each side where the 5 volt and grounds are for the camera and the VTX. So if you wanted to have a separate installation, maybe you want your VTX at the back and the camera at the front, or different heights or something like that, this works out really good, but we're not going to do that for this demonstration purposes. So I am going to step aside. I'm going to wire this up. We'll come back and we'll start to walk through it. Almost got ahead of myself. This board is bigger than a traditional brushed flight controller. So if we just take a look at it, the layout is fairly, fairly similar. But we've got a few extra millimeters there on the end. And uh, I'll measure this one real quick just so you have an idea. So about 21 and a half by 32.77. Whereas this one is going to be the same width, they're very close, actually narrower, 19.41, and then our length, 37.49. So it's a bit longer, but again, we've got a receiver built in, so that's going to be handy for us. Okay, now I'm going to get everything connected, and we'll come back and start to walk through the features. Let's go ahead and bind this up. I went ahead and added a power lead, but I'm going to hit use the USB cable, which is plugged into the computer, and it will be supplying power. It'll actually power the voltage regulator and the camera as well. I'll turn this around so you can see that. I'll come on a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down this little bind button over here while I apply power. So you saw the blue light flicker. That's just our status light, I believe. Now we hit the bind button. If you're using a Tyrannus, you won't have to worry about the protocol selection, but you can see there it's uh, FR Sky. So we're going to bind, let it go through its process. Now if I power cycle the board, so I unplug the USB, 
plug it back in. Now I'm going to connect to Betaflight and verify I have stick movement. And I do, so we're all bound up. It's pretty easy, really. Let's go ahead and move on to taking a closer look at the OSD. To get into the OSD, you need to make sure that Betaflight can be armed, or the board can be armed. So your stick inputs need to be at 1,000, or real close to 1,000. The midpoint needs to be at 1,500, and the maximum at 2,000. If you switch arm, go ahead and set up a switch so that you can arm and disarm the board. If we can't, if the board can't confirm that it's arming or disarming, then it won't allow you to get into the OSD. So to get into the OSD, we go left stick mid and full right, right stick full forward, let go, now you can see we've got our status. And this is where it becomes real handy because we can just navigate. We don't have much to see here, so let's go page. And I like to PID tune with OSDs. That's the primary feature for me outside of keeping track of my uh, batteries. So let's say I want to change this value and I want to change it up to 50. And I want to change my roll and uh, pitch rate. So go 75. Whoops, keep going back and forth. 75 there. And then once I'm done with all these things, I can go to save and exit. That writes those values. So now I want to go back into the OSD and I want to change a few more things. So I'm going to go into page, page. We've got our load rate. You've got TPA and yaw. Let's go ahead and let's change our yaw rate. So I like to have my yaw rate pretty high. So I go to 80 oftentimes. Gives me about 1300 degrees per second. And that's pretty good for here. So I'm going to save and exit. There we go. So if you want to disable the features in this particular OSD, you've got to do it through Betaflight. Uh, you're not going to be able to do it live on the go, so set up your Betaflight at your desk before you head out to the field. And then you can use the PID tuning and the uh, battery information and also the RSSI. In this particular case with FreeSky and this particular receiver, you can um, also view your signal strength for control. Now we're going to take a look at how Betaflight responds and our configuration options within Betaflight. And I'm already connected and inside the OSD tab, and I'm looking through my goggles here, and you can see my radio, and you can see my hand over here on the mouse. And um, if you watch the lower left-hand corner of your screen, on the DVR, if I uncheck the main bat voltage, we'll watch that go away instantly. And that's one of the big bonuses of Betaflight, is it responds very quickly. If you have experience with other OSDs, you probably find that many of them don't respond this quickly. And so, as technology moves forward, this is what we have. Uh, we'll go ahead and re-enable that, and you can disable anything that you want to not see on your DVR. Like something we don't currently use with uh, with mini quads, uh, artificial horizon. Let's take that away. Um, or if say you want the artificial horizon but you don't want the sidebars. So now we have that. Um, let's go ahead and let's move this channel, I think it is, down here a little bit so we can see that a little better. And our time on, let's move that clear down to the bottom. And you can see how quickly that responds. Oh, it's not all on screen, so let's move it over a touch. And now we can see it a little bit. So we can really configure this to our heart's desire. And once we're done, we click the Save button, and it writes the values back to the board, and we're all set. Uh, you also note over here it has video format. If you have any troubles with auto, go ahead and select PAL or NTSC to see if that helps. I think that reviews all the features that we have available to us on this nice little brush board with an FR Sky receiver and an OSD. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the section down below. And I thank you for watching.